How's it going, everybody? It's your boy Poppy Wolf. And today, for this episode of Anime Love Talk, we're going to be talking about Fruits Basket. And this is the original 2003 Fruits Basket, not the new remake one. <laughs> so let's jump right in, shall we? So, getting into Fruits Basket, all started, I want to try to like put a timeline on this. I believe it was my freshman year again. Um, getting off of Fullmetal Alchemist and stuff, I was just browsing through anime thinking, what do I want to watch? I want to watch something that's, I, I would say, more romantic. That's what I was looking for. I was looking more romance based. But I thought I wanted something cooler too. So, I remember flipping through the flipping through the Netflix queues and just thinking, okay, what do I want to watch? What do I want to watch? When, bam, it was there. Fruits Basket. And I remember what caught my eye was one of the main characters had hair like Ichigo Kurosaki from Bleach. And I was like, hmm interesting this looks dope maybe it's cool i'll have to watch it then i put it on and then i was not prepared for the fields the fields trip i was going to be on because jesus was this show fucking epic and so fucking hectic i'm so sorry for all that noise in the background let's just ignore all that but so roots basket starts off with the main character toru honda and her mom telling her a story about how God invited 12 zodiac animals to the fucking some banquet, but the mouse lied to the, or the rat lied to the cat, saying, Don't come, it's tomorrow, blah 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 blah. The cat doesn't show up, the cat gets cursed, and the cat gets stripped out of the zodiac. So, I never heard that story before. I think it might be only pertaining to the anime, <laughs> I'm not positive. Anyways, so we get that story, and it gets into a, 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 fl a little flash forward where Honda is kind of like, oh, well, I declare that I always want to like love the cat as my favorite animal, blah, blah, blah. She grows up. Her mom's passed away. Her grandpa is, I believe he's with other family, but they're staying in a hotel. Their house is getting remodeled and she has no one to stay with. So she's homeless, homeless living on in the, like, the outskirts of the state of the Soma family, who we never see uh, to this point yet, and she doesn't know she doesn't aware of that yet. So the series continues. Uh, they eventually find her out there, and they're kind of noticing that she's just what the hell is she doing out here? Like this is private property. She ends up befriending all of them, and she finds out their I wouldn't even say deadly curse, but their secret curse is that if they're hugged by any of the opposite sex. They turn into their zodiac animal or if they exhaust themselves due to sickness or illness and they can't keep their forms from changing they then turn to an animal as well anyways these people turn to animals we meet yuki he's the um rat we meet i can't remember his name the older uncle cousin and he's the dog and then eventually kyo comes out and kyo is my favorite character he's the only person's name that i fully remember and that's only because I love that homeboy is orange and I thought that was cool because he's orange and stuff and I was like haha it's close to my favorite color red so I'm going I'm identified with this guy so we see um we see Kyo and Kyo's the cat and Han Toru Hondo's already trying to like you know yo I love the cat bro like let's be friends and he he's kind of a big sundry boy who's like ah oh, I don't care about you but be safe and <laughs> my little heart i was just like oh my god he's the coolest like he likes girls and he's just not a big emotional guy and he's really ruggedy and like i'm ruggedy because i'm a big dude and it, it was just a cool little thing i just remember watching this just falling in love with all these characters thinking oh, they're so amazing they're so cute and then boom we get the background stories oh the background stories <laughs> these all fucking hurt man from finding out that Kyo is literally cursed, which is like the last episode, to like even the little things like um, Mizuku, I think Mizuku or something like that, the rabbit boy whose mom literally chose to like erase her memories from of him in her head. To even the doctor, uh, Saru, Soru, Sora, I can't remember his name. I can't remember all these names that I was just watching the show like yesterday, but um. The doctor horse guy, he's a seahorse by the way, he he literally is gonna get married. 
and their cousin that is the sick one, the leader of the family, the god of the family, forbids him and literally slaps his wife and then blames the, no, slaps the doctor, blames the wife for the reason why and says that I hit him because of you, his pain, his scar on his face is because of you. Like, what the fuck? Like, this guy literally abuses mentally and physically his family members just to make them feel as as saddened as him it's so fucking horrible man like, i think 16 year old 15 year old me was watching this thinking and here i am complaining about my little heartbreaks when these people are literally putting other people first and putting all the people they love first the show really handles sacrifice as a big uh it's a big thing for like love like like you truly love somebody when you sacrifice everything for them but at the same time too the show also puts selfishness in it as well like you can't just always sacrifice everything for everybody you also have to be selfish for yourself for your happiness and no more is this conveyed than when Kyo tells Haru when he tries when they see how awful her family is to her making all these assumptions of the fact that she lived with all these men the fact that her mother was this big rebel and her father was this straight-laced man like they just make these very big assumptions about her and everyone is quick to shut them up especially the grandpa the grandpa is quick to say you know nothing of my grandfather you know nothing of how her father my son saw his wife he wasn't tricked into getting with her he wasn't strong-armed he saw adventure with her. A straight-laced man fell in love with a beautiful rebel woman and made this amazing girl who's selfless enough to give everything to the world before she even dares ask about one thing for herself. I was, I was left aghast at these type of people who would make assumptions about someone as pure as Toru Honda. I mean, outside looking in, we we only see how pure she is inside looking out we do see how the situation is going to be seen as that but at the same time too it's it's so hard to see someone so pure as her and for Kyo to literally walk with her out of that house storm away with her just to shut these people up the words he says to her just echoed in my heart to even now when he tells Orohanda if you wanted to stay with us say it next time say how you feel tell us what you want don't just think you know what we want say what you want and tell us what you want i i was left aghast i was left like dumbfounded i never thought in a million years it was okay to ever be selfish i mean growing up in a church only family and with a lot of elders in my family i was always told selfish selflessness is important always give and you'll give back. and you, you sometimes people will give back to you but to be selfish with your feelings to be able to say what you want to say to be able to say how you really feel that that's so important that's so powerful that's so that's something i couldn't even comprehend to even think about doing for myself and i just that stuck with me I just wanted to say what was always on my mind to the day now where I always do, but at a young age, I was just excited to have somebody say that it's okay to say what you really feel. It's okay to like say what you want to say. It's okay to just like, you know, it's okay to just say, hey, I'm sad. Hey, I want to stay here forever because you guys make me feel like I'm part of this family like oh my god like you just feel for this girl that this is what she this is always what she wanted to feel included into a family again and she finally has that with this cursed family and it's just beautiful to watch it's just beautiful to see and it's beautiful how her effect on this family pulls away from the main antagonist of it there um uh, god i can't remember this main character's name I'm horrible with this guy, I swear. I need to get better with remembering character names. But, um, the head of the family, he's just the most, he's just a huge prick. I, I think his whole sassiness, his whole demeanor 
is just jealousy rating like off to the, the fifth degree because this guy can't stand if anyone's happier than him but he's always miserable so everyone has to be miserable 10 times over he uses yuki as a toy only because yuki's handsome and pretty and it's just like looking at a doll for him he constantly reminds yuki that he can't ever have a life because all he is is a toy he's gonna be a rat people won't accept him if they find out so he must always be near him and obey him at all costs he beats two of his little like little members of the clan because they find comfort in each other being that they are both zodiacs and they both can find love in each other he forbids it he beats them and he toys with them to the point where one of them goes mute out of all the abuse he constantly plays and attacks the rabbit boy i'm gonna call him rabbit boy because i don't know his name because he knows that his mom didn't want him so he's like learn your place and remember no one wanted you you were just nothing like it's 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 all of this that that makes you think well god fucking damn it bro like who could save this character who could save the guy who like who just literally attacks everybody I mean for he exposes one of the biggest secrets in the family being Kyo's true cat form. When God cursed the cat, he didn't just curse the cat and make him out of the zodiac. He disfigured him, making him this ghastly, disgusting looking monster, just reeking of this awful stench. And just does it right in front of Toru Honda, the girl that Kyo loves. He rips that guy's bracelet off and pushes Toru Hunter to see and see the very monster that she has been saying that she's going to love and protect. He forces her to see the true form. He literally plays God and tests her feeling. And he, he almost destroys this poor boy's mentality. This poor boy's little piece of happiness that he was gaining for himself, this piece of confidence, and he takes it away. He takes it away. Ah, and we even find further into this background story that Kyo, Kyo's mom hid him from the world. She was so scared that somebody would see where her son was that she tortured herself by keeping him in at all doors. I mean, not at all times. She sacrificed her own happiness so that people wouldn't make fun of her son. And all her son wanted her to say is, look at me. I'm a monster, mom. Please just acknowledge that I'm what I am so I can help acknowledge myself. And she refused to give that acknowledgement. Sometimes hiding the secret and pushing it under the rug isn't the best course of action to handle these things. Sometimes you have to face it have to face the you know the elephant in the room you have to say it out loud and make it real so you guys can handle and get through these things but that wasn't something his mom could do her suicide was her escape from never having to see her son in that form and reveal and say out loud that she thinks her own son's a monster the sad part that kill says is that i wish she would have said that because then I would have known that she really saw me. But it's Toru Honda who hugs him, who haunts him down, who refuses to let him push her away. Because even though she thinks he's horrifying, he smells everything about his monster form is terrifying. She loves the person that he truly is. And all she says, I am selfish, I want you back. You told me to say what I want. I want us to go back home. All of us. And I can't I couldn't help but just tear up about this scene. Lord, I to have somebody just look at you, look at you through all your flaws, through everything that you've been insecure with your entire life, just to tell you, I see it. And you know that some of the times they can't accept it. But at least as they see it and they acknowledge it and they let you know 
none of that matters because I want to just go home. I want things to be okay. I want things to be happy. I was fucking wrecked, guys. I was crying for days. Fruits Basket had killed my fucking little heart. And I was crying. And it ends with her kind of... Is it Agayo? Yagato? She basically just checks the cousin or the, the head of the house, the head of the family. Reminds him that he's pathetic and sad and lonelier than any of them. And she feels sorry for him, hitting him, hitting this man who sees himself as a god. To the point where the whole family pays him too. It's it's just such an amazing show. How these two characters are the parallels to each other. One who wants to make everybody's life miserable because his life's miserable while the other character is miserable too but she doesn't want to make everybody's life miserable she goes out of her way to make sure that everyone's life isn't miserable because of her the parallels between um these two characters are amazing i love it i fucking can't stop talking about this series fruits basket is one of those hidden gems that when i found it i i could see why it was so special and i could see why a lot of first time anime watchers put that on top of the list because it sold me off i was so happy <laughs> and now with the remake back i'm even happier because i didn't read the manga so i was just like oh i found out that that last little part never happened but anyways guys thank you for this episode of anime love talk i love talking about fruits basket this was such a fun episode and it was so cool to talk about how this show just really made me think as a kid overall Fruits Basket's one of those series that I hold really close to my heart because it's the first shoujo that I actually watched that I actually really enjoyed. It really did mess up my little heart. It kind of reminded, it kind of showed me that it's okay to be selfish. There's nothing wrong with being selfish. And it's okay to be selfless as, as well. It's finding that middle balance of understanding when to say what you want and when is the appropriate time to not say what you want it's it still holds up to this day the 2003 version still holds up i highly do recommend the newer version but for what it was at the time the the 2003 version still sticks to my head the most kind of like how the first full metal alchemist holds close to my heart being very very sweet while this one is very hmm this one was just wrapped up too fast i really hoped for season two never got it but it still was satisfying to the end I was happy with Fruits Basket. I didn't leave sadder, like, teared up. I was happy that everybody, in a sense, could get a happy ending. And now with the show still ongoing, <laughs> I could finally see who she ends up with. I mean, I'm, I've, I kind of know who she ends up with. But it's still fun to watch the journey. And I think next episode, we're going to be talking about another show Joy started watching. And that's called Around House Club. And... I might need some backup, so I might ask a buddy of mine to see if he could uh, <laughs> put, a, put a couple words in that one. Anyways, guys, this is your boy Poppy Wolf saying peace, and I love you guys. Bye.